Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Tokyo Rampage, also known as Porno Star, a Japanese crime drama from 1998 that was the debut film from director Toshiaki Toyota, a man who has made his fair share of interesting films over the last few decades. I hope to review a few more of his films in the coming months on this channel. Now, in regard to Tokyo Rampage, I'm still not sure why the alternate title is Porno Star, because it has nothing to do with the adult film industry. Is it supposed to have some kind of like symbolic or metaphorical meaning or purpose? If you know the answer to this, let me know in the comments section below, because I have not been able to find an answer as to why this film was named that. But regardless, Tokyo Rampage begins with a slow motion shot of a crowded intersection that is pretty cool and serves as the establishing shot of one of our main characters, a man named Arano, who is a cold-hearted and violent person. Then we're introduced to a Yakuza, well, a businessman technically, named Kamijo, who is lecturing one of his bar girls about not getting paid by her client. Now, Arano almost has an altercation with Kamijo after bumping into him, but they part ways for a bit. Now, this uh, businessman goes back to uh, a meeting with a Yakuza boss who wants to hire him as a full-time gangster, but, you know, he, he doesn't want to become an official Yakuza, and he does not identify him, himself in that way. You know, he's, he sees himself as a businessman first, but he deals with the, the Yakuza and the criminals as necessary. But unfortunately, he may not have a choice, given some conflict that arises, and how does this uh, unhinged Arano guy fit into all of this? So you basically have two main characters in Tokyo Rampage, and I like the way that the film alternates between each of their activities and then has them work together for a while, even though there's obviously some friction between them as they work together. Sometimes their interaction is a bit surprising in how it plays out, and I like that. There's definitely a rawness and grit to how this movie is shot. You know, everything has a certain realness to it, but there's also a notable style here as well. Uh, a few images really stand out that help this film to carve out its own identity and make it somewhat memorable. You know, the aforementioned opening slow motion shot is one example. It's a scene that I remember most from this movie. But there are a bunch of other scenes that are pretty cool. Uh, I won't spoil anything, but just to give you an idea, uh, there's a cool looking scene that uses a lot of tomatoes. <laughs> seemed kind of random at the time. There's a shot of a city street with crows flying overhead, which is pretty cool. There's a skateboarding scene that's quite fun. There's a scene involving an unusual style of rain that was pretty pretty interesting as well. And then, of course, the scene that probably most people will remember is a stabbing scene that is so excessive it needs to be seen to be believed. One limitation of Tokyo Rampage is that it does not have a lot of character or story complexity to it. There are also no action set pieces at all, but there are a few violent scuffles along the way. This film occupies like an odd middle ground because it lacks action and it also kind of lacks deep characters and story, but it's still somehow a very interesting Yakuza film. And it's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly why. I mean, I suspect it's primarily due to the aforementioned interaction between the characters as well as the directing style and some of the visuals and, and individual scenes that you get. There's just something about this movie that I saw, you know, for the second time in recent memory that uh, I liked it even more the second time I saw it. It's just, uh, it's just interesting to watch. If you're a fan of raw, like down-to-earth Yakuza dramas, they have a distinctive feel and style to them, you know, check this one out. Tokyo Rampage, also known as Porno Star, is currently available on DVD in multiple regions with English subtitles. And as always, I'll see you next time.